Hi, everyone, and thank you to our iHomes uh, weekly video that we're doing here. And today we're going to be talking about mortgage information. And so, um, first of all, my name is JJ Johannes with IA Homes. I'm one of the co-founders of the company here, and we help people in real estate. And what we're wanting to do is continue to do weekly updates, giving you guys some mortgage information, real estate information to help you in that, in that real estate journey. So today we're going to talk about mortgages, and I have Dan Hillers here. So Dan, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi. I'm Dan Hillers with First Federal Credit Union, mortgage loan expert at First Federal. Uh, do this on a daily basis, so glad to be here and, and talking about everything under the mortgage side today. Yep, and so I'm sure, Dan, being in the mortgage industry, like one of the things that you hear most commonly is, you know, where are the interest rates? Where are the mortgage rates at currently? And so, um, you know, if you kind of want to shed some light on where we're at currently um, and where we were maybe in the last few years, or for the last few months even, because sure. we've gone down a little bit. Yeah, so in the last, just pricing them out here this morning, the 30-year the fixed is running anywhere from 4.25 to 4.375 and four and a half. So anywhere in that area, depending on what your credit score is and uh, what your range is on that on that end. 15-year uh, fixed today running anywhere in the high threes, 3.875, 3.75, depending on if you wanted to buy it down or again, what your credit score is on that side. Gotcha. Um, and I didn't mention this right away, so a little housekeeping. If you have any questions as we're online, I'm watching those comments. So if you have questions and you wanna put those in, feel free to, and then after the, sh uh, after the video is over, if you put comments in there, we'll be sure to get those answered or have Dan answer those for you as well. Um, and so, you know, another common thing that I think people think a lot or I hear people question, I'm sure you do as well, is, well, I heard that the Fed raised rates or they lowered rates or what are they doing? And I think we're getting into a, um, a market in, a, in an economy going forward that we're going to see them raise rates and they immediately think that the mortgage rates are going to go up that same percentage if they went up a quarter percent or whatever that it, yeah. it increased those rates. Right. And so can you speak to you know that and yeah. getting that question? Yeah, get that a lot as, as far as just recently because it's in the news quite a bit when they raise the interest rate side of things is on the Fed when they raise those. Sometimes it takes longer for it to hit the mortgage end, and usually ours kind of regress right away or, re or go back down. They kind of have that built back into the pricing. So a lot of times when they're raising rates, ours actually kind of like trickle back a little bit, and then it takes a little bit for them to catch back up to the rising interest rate environment, which we're in. And yep. uh, the last, as far as like the history on it, the last few months, obviously they were up. And then just recently within the past, maybe 30, 40 days, it kind of, tailed back off and came back down to uh, where they were, you know, middle of last year. Yep. So. Um, and then someone's looking to buy a house and, you know, they're, they're thinking that 2019 is going to be a year that they're going to buy a house. Um, you know, from your perspective on the mortgage side, you know, what's the first things that they should do or what's the first step that they should take? Yeah. One of the, the first thing we always talk about on our end is, getting in and doing a pre-qualification so they know where they stand on a payment side, down payment, uh, what they can afford, what their comfort zone is, because you know, they may be able to get qualified for more than what they actually want to spend on a monthly basis. So it's important for them to get in and kind of feel feel out where they're at on that end and just and get comfortable before they go out and put an offer on a place. And it gives uh, everybody a peace of mind knowing they're pre-qualified and they have the letter that they can give uh, the realtor and the and the seller letting them know that they've talked to someone about that. So. Yeah, and it's really important that you have that pre-approval letter because when you do go to submit that offer, and we've talked about it in some other videos um, here recently about if you're serious about buying a home and you go to make that offer, you don't have that pre-approval letter, especially if there's multiple offers or there's some competition for the home, your offer may not look as good. Um, and if you if you watch different real estate information out there, you'll see some people will say, you know, your first step should be to contact a realtor. Your first step should be to contact a lender, you know, is what Dan is saying. And to me, either one of those is your next best first step. Those are probably gonna be step one and two, whether you do one first or the other. Um, you know, if you have a home to sell, you may want to talk to a, to a realtor to understand what your, you know, purchase or sale price is and what equity you have in the home. Um, but if you're going to be a first time home buyer, wanting to understand your financial situation to be able to buy a home, you know, you definitely want to meet with that lender right away, whether it's step one or two, to understand what you're looking to buy versus, you know, sometimes people go out and they'll look at open houses and then they'll fall in love with that $200,000 house, but their finances, debt to income, credit score, 
um, all those things might put them at the 150 and they're always comparing to that $200,000 house. Right, right. And, and that makes it tough for them to then, you know, when they look at the 150 because it's less square footage and, yep. and all those things. So um, so if, if the pre-approval is such an important piece, um, you know, how, how does someone get pre-approved with you? When can they reach out to you? Is it Monday through Friday, eight to five? Does it take a couple of days? You know, can it kind of explain that process of how you get people pre-approved um, and pre-qualified and, and, and how they work, how you work with them to get that done? Yeah, generally speaking, if someone reaches out to Nancy or I at the credit union, we jump on it right away to try to get back to them and get them an answer or at least uh, get the information from them so that they we can uh, get them a pre-approval letter. Usually it takes uh, about 15, 20 minutes. We can at least get one and get their information so we can start generating that pre-approval letter so it doesn't take too long but it's nice to sit down and kind of go over numbers with people too so they have a general idea on on where they're at payment wise or what they have to bring in for a down payment so we can reach out to them right away get back in touch with them it's not an eight to five thing we've had people reach out to us all hours of the day uh, mm -hmm. to touch base and see if they can get pre-qualified and then we we will kind of respond to them as quick as we possibly can uh, and pull up our laptops and get them get them a pre-approval letter as quick as possible. Yep. And and so kind of talking about that pre-approval process, you know, um, what's kind of some of the minimum credit scores that someone would need for to qualify for a mortgage? So credit score wise, generally the minimum is right around six twenty, and then rates are tiered as you get as you go down to that mark. So you might not get the best interest rate if you're at 620, but there's options that are out there for that. Uh, and then going down below that, we, there are some options that go a little bit lower than that on the on the uh, lending side. So mm -hmm. there might be some products that fit just below that 620 mark that, that maybe not there yet, but uh, there's still some options out there available for those people. Yep. And then um, one of the things that people think a lot about is how much down payment do I need? How much money do I need to save up? Um, you know, 20 years or more ago, you know, 20% was a pretty common requirement. Right. Um, and so, you know, where are, where's the down payment needed for someone looking to buy a home today? So you can range anywhere from a down payment side to 20% down. We have as little as three or 0% down uh, uh, as far as the options go. And again, some of those range on where your credit score is at. So if you're going to go 100% financing or zero down, maybe your credit score is pretty good, so it's it's uh, generally priced accordingly. And so there are there are different options available if you don't have a large down payment. Uh, obviously, you know the more down payment you have helps on the payment side because it drives your payment down a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, it helps you out from that from that aspect. But yeah, there are all kinds of options out there available. Uh, there's also some down payment assistant options out there available. I know if you're buying in the city of Cedar Rapids right now. They have a grant money that's available that you can use to put towards your down payment if you're a first time home buyer. Uh, and then later this spring, we have some other down payment options that are going to become available to us from a first time home buyer uh, option. So from a first time home buyer status. So. And those those down payment programs, assistance, there's there's usually a deed restriction, meaning when you go to sell a house, you have to live there for so long. Otherwise, you have to pay back a portion right. of that. Right. Correct. Yeah. So five, generally it's five years. So if you're there for five years, it if you say you get $5,000 to help you put towards the down payment, some of that's decreasing. So every year, a little bit of that goes away and then it's gone after that five year time period. So gotcha. And yeah. then um, on the closing cost side, I mean, one of the things that people want to know is, you know, how much is it going to cost me on the mortgage side, the closing cost side to, um, to buy this house, you know, um, what are you typically seeing for closing costs as far as how much that impacts or how much, what percentage or an amount that people are typically seeing on that, the total closing costs? Yeah, so generally closing costs, unless you're paying a 1% uh, origination fee, which would be 1% of your loan amount, generally closing costs are running anywhere from right around 1700 to $2,000, depending on how much the appraisal is, depending if that appraiser has to go out because they have, you know, uh, an inspection to do or something like that on the property or how much mm -hmm. title work is. So I say it's always kind of a, a good range for people. Um, and then I, you could probably speak more on that, but there's a lot of times when you're putting the offer in, that's kind of written into the offer as far as it, yeah. as far as a closing cost credit. So some of that kind of comes back to them. It can come back. It to can them, come back to them. Yeah. And on that closing cost, um, 
you know, what I would say is I, I see a lot of people want to ask for closing costs and it's become more and more popular or more common that we'll see that particularly first time home buyers. And I think it's, it's, it's a great thing to have a buyer um, get that to help them kind of minimize their costs when they get into a house, you know, that way they can be prepared if something comes up with the furnace or the roof or something like that um, to see, to save some of that um, cash that they have. But one of the things I think sometimes buyers that I see that they don't quite understand is that the closing cost doesn't come from some sort of magic money tree. Um, it comes out of the seller's proceeds. And so um, if you're making an offer, you know, using simple numbers, you're making an offer, uh, a $200,000 house at 195 and you want $5,000 in closing costs, well, to the seller, you've made a 190 offer. Um, so they're, the sellers are typically looking at whatever that closing cost is, they're subtracting it right off. Um, sometimes buyers can be confused if they make a full price offer on a house that just got listed and they ask for $5,000 in closing costs, why the, the seller would counter back um, because they feel like they've made a full price offer. Well, to the seller, you haven't made a full price offer. You've made a $5,000 under asking price offer. So that's one thing I think um, just for buyers to understand is that that closing cost comes right out of the seller proceeds. So whether you offer, you know, in that example, 195 with 5,000 closing costs, 192, 500 with 2,500 or 190 with zero, you know, the seller is essentially netting the same thing. So just be aware of that and how that affects you and that negotiations to get that house, what your, your kind of your net net offer is minus those closing costs. Yeah, no, that's good for, that's good to know. So, um, and then what about time frame? So I get an accepted offer, you know, sometimes buyers will think, well, you know, can we close by the, you know, in a couple of weeks or, you know, or is it going to take like 90 days to close? You know, what's what's kind of the time frame right now that you're seeing on, on loans? Yeah, generally on on purchase transactions that we're kind of talking about, we run right around 30 days to 45 mm -hmm. days. I always tell people uh, that just gives us time to do a couple things. We have the appraiser go out there and do the appraisal on the property, gives us time to get the title work back. Can it be done quicker? Yeah, it can be done quicker. It can be done a little bit uh, sooner on that side. But generally, I always tell people, give us at least on the 30 day time frame to get uh, our processors time to get all the information back that they need. So, yep. And um, and talking from the, the seller and buyer side as well on the real estate side of things, you know, that's typically what we're seeing is, you know, most buyers are looking and sellers are looking at that 30 to 45 days. That's really kind of the most common one. Um, and, you know, now that we're kind of post shutdown, hopefully on the government side, um, you know, what loans were affected by that? And then are they, you know, uh, is there any continued effect that someone would have if they have a certain type of loan today? Yeah. So on the, as far as uh, loans that were affected by it, USDA was really one of the only ones that was like directly affected by it because uh, we, they couldn't have the underwriting part take place. It was kind of slowed down from that aspect. Uh, they, there's a final approval that needs to be done on a USDA loan. So they, what, that wasn't able to happen. So that's where those kind of slowed down. The FHA, the VA, those were still in process and you could process through on, on those, gotcha. loans, those type of loans. Um, and now kind of going back to that, the mortgage process from accepted offer to close, you know, one of the things um, occasionally that will come up is there's not final financing approval or something, you know, comes up that it doesn't close. Um, and so maybe speak to the fact that sometimes buyers will feel like, okay, I got an accepted offer. I'm going to buy this house. So now I'm going to go to, you know, the furniture store and I'm going to get an 18 month, you know, no right. interest loan. Right. And then I'm going to, cause I'm going to buy that. And then I'm going to go buy a TV. So I got to go to, you know, I go to Best Buy and I got to get an 18 month financing on my TV. And so they take on all this debt. Sure. And then that could potentially affect their, um, purchaseability approval. for approval yeah. on that loan. So it's always good to talk to your uh, lender on that end just to see where you stand. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if there's some people, yeah, it might be perfectly okay to go out and, and do that and get the furniture part of it. But then there's uh, some scenarios where maybe, you know, the amount of debt you have on a monthly basis as opposed to your income. And I know it's a big thing. Maybe that's a little tight. So if you go out and do that, it would push you over and then you couldn't get approved on it. So there's different scenarios for each person. So it's always good to stay in touch with your lender on that just to see where, where you might stand. You might be able to go out and do it, but there might be times where like, Hey, you need to hold off until we at least get this through and get it final approved so that we're ready to go. So, and really any, any finances that change, whether it's 
salary or jobs or debt that they're potentially looking right. at come on anything that changes in that they should really be communicating that with their lender the entire time yeah correct yeah so that when we get there's you never want to surprise when you get to closing or close to closing so it's nice to know all that up front as far as if you've changed a job or if you don't have the down payment available anymore or anything along those lines just so you have an idea of, of where you're at on the on the uh, finance side yep so um and then going into you know it's January, um, we're going into 2019. You know, what are your thoughts on um, maybe the market, but particularly like the interest rates? You know, what's what's kind of the trend that people are projecting out there for that? Yeah. So on the interest rate side of things, I think last year everybody, you know, we were projecting them to go up, and they were you know kept climbing a little bit there toward the end of the year, and then leveled back off. Uh, it's so hard to say on on the rate side, but Generally speaking, I, I would I would think they're going to stay pretty level, if not inch up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you're going to see a huge spike in it. But then again, that's just my opinion on that end. Um, markets side, you could probably speak more for that. But I think uh, we'd love it if it would stay like it has been the last few mm -hmm. years. I don't know if you know if that's possible to keep it up, but it's great that it's it's uh, it, it was definitely hot in 2018. So we hope to continue that on in 2019. So. Yeah, on the market side, it seems like everybody thinks that the market's going to be fairly similar. Um, here, a little bit of people think it's going to go maybe up a little bit, some down a little bit, but there's there, there's a consistency that's going to be a very similar type of market than we've had the last couple of years on the on the housing side of the of the market. And if the rates, you know, in conjunction stay kind of close to that same, so to speak, baseline, you know, I think that will that will only aid in that continuing to be a strong market. So. Um, uh, why don't we? Why don't you touch on you know the different mortgage options that you have yeah. there at First Federal and and how you can help people depending on um, different types of loans and and you know veterans and stuff like that. Yep. So we are a full service mortgage company uh, at First Federal Credit Union. We can do anything from the conventional. Uh, we have you know conventional thirty year fix. We do keep some in house. We have uh, all the government products, so FHA, USDA, VA. Uh, we have people to help us out with that. So. We have a full a full range of, of options that we can put you in. So that's why, you know, you talk about what kind of the best options are. It just depends on each individual person mm -hmm. when you come in and sit down and go over, you know, what your credit score is or what your down payment is. There might be different options for everybody that that uh, that fit their needs. And and then that way you can put them, you know, that person can get the right product for them that they're going to have what they what they can afford for a down payment or what they can afford for a payment. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and take care of their needs on that side. So. Yep. Um, I think that's all the questions I have. Uh, any any thoughts or anything that you want to share, or maybe contact information, or how they would get a hold of you or Nancy? Yeah. So you guys can contact us. We have our website firstfedcu.com. All of our contact info is out there. Uh, feel free if you guys have questions on a pre-approval or how how long it takes or whatever you would need on a on a mortgage side of things. Feel free to contact Nancy Wymore or myself. Um, our cell phone numbers are out there too, so we can always be reached and are happy to help anybody out that needs a pre-qualification. Yep. So. Well, uh, thanks again for joining us on this Facebook Live and appreciate you guys you know, watching this, whether it's live or afterwards. If you have any questions, as always, you can reach out to us or put comments below. Um, you can go to our web website at iahomes.com or visit our Facebook page, which if you're watching this, you might be on that already. So hope you guys have a great day and stay warm this week. Take care.